strategies for building a successful SaaS product. Here at Flying Donkey, we have been a part of many successful SaaS products, and I want to share some of the strategies we've employed and some of the pitfalls we've come across. I'm Matt Grace, Managing Director of Flying Donkey. Let's get into it. All right, I'm going to jump into the first, and what I suggest is the most important thing to make a successful SaaS product, and that is do prototyping. Here at Flying Donkey, prototyping is part of every facet of the software that we build, but for successful SaaS products, we highly, highly recommend you do prototyping. Now, prototyping can take the form of many things, and here at Flying Donkey, we use generally a product called Figma. Figma allows you to put prototypes together very easily and allows you to edit and change things simply on the web. One thing about Figma that we do probably slightly differently is that we essentially go straight to high fidelity mockups rather than using any interim wireframing. We found that over time, the wireframing step becomes a bit obsolete and the little bit of extra time it takes to do the high fidelity mockups makes a lot of difference. Prototyping is key for a few different reasons. When you're producing a initial SaaS product, what you're really trying to do is get investor feedback. That investor feedback is really gonna get you the funds to enable you to build the product. Prototyping is quick and cheap and it very easily illustrates exactly what your product's gonna do and convey that message to investors. We recommend here when you're building this SaaS product that you do your prototyping first and don't look to write any code at all. From the prototype, you're able to then get the investors money and start the business. Even at this point, you probably heard me say before, software as a service as an acronym is what I generally suggest people look at. Software as a service, I recommend you always drop the software part and you try and do the business as a service. Once you've got the prototype there, you've essentially got the goal and what you're aiming for. You then try and run the business as a service and you try and facilitate what you're trying to do with the minimal things as you can. Building code is slow and expensive and it's really just the very last thing that you do. Once you've got a successful service business, you can then try and convert that and enshrine that in the software. Doing this allows you to work out exactly what your business is gonna offer and the way your customers are gonna see value in it. Then, from the prototypes and the things you've learned from the service-based business, you can then put these into software. At the same time, if you've got an established SaaS business, realistically, using prototyping is the best way to get documents. If you've got an existing SaaS business, Prototyping is still recommended as the best way for you to gather requirements. Previously, back in the day when Waterfall was very popular, you used to go out and you'd write a 20, 30, 40 page document. The problem with that is by the time you got that document to the stage where it needed to be developed, the features and functionality had changed. At the same time, two people can read a written word completely separately. Prototyping generally two to three pages at a time and getting that directly into development speeds up this process and allows you to get things out to market quicker. Prototyping very well conveys exactly what you're after and allows both your teams and potentially external consultants to quote much more accurately on when stuff can be delivered. You can plan more accurately and not to miss as many deliveries times. To be honest, prototyping is probably the most core thing you can do to help drive your SaaS business, particularly from a product perspective, because you're gonna be able to not only get feedback from investors, but you're also gonna be able to get it from the market itself. Taking prototypes out to potential clients and showing them what you're gonna build enables them to see that not only you're trying to do something for them, but they're getting that very instant feedback. Prototyping works across the whole part of the business, and I'd highly recommend that's probably the biggest and best strategy you can employ in your SaaS company to make it successful. All right, you're doing prototyping and it's working really well. The next really strategy you should be doing is really using MVPs. MVPs is minimal viable product. Now, minimal viable products I've seen construed in multiple different ways, but realistically, it's about getting the absolute smallest product you can into market and getting that customer feedback loop in place. I mentioned previously, to me, software as a service for an MVP really should be just doing it as a service. Here, you're doing the most minimal product, and that is no product, to get that feedback to allow you to go out to market and see if there's demand there for the value you can provide. Minimal viable products in software is obviously where you have a list of features and you try and cut them down to the most minimal form you can, essentially looking at those main pieces of workflows that you're trying to deliver. Don't worry about edge cases, don't worry about scenarios, you're really focusing on that really one main flow that you're trying to deliver and seeing if there's value in that flow. That's going to hit the majority of your market and it's going to give you the feedback that you need. To be honest, keeping things small is really the only thing I've ever seen that helped projects get delivered. In software, it's difficult enough to deliver anything and while you can put more people on it, you can architect it different ways or you can do use different languages. The best way to deliver software is to deliver less of it. It reduces the risk, it reduces the cost and if you can get it to market, you can help them guide you as to what the next feature is going to be. Next strategy is really around deployment and deploying very regularly. Every software as a service company, for me, it's now a non-negotiable, you need to have development pipelines set up. Closely followed behind this would be something like infrastructure as a code. Now that's becoming more commonplace, but it's not quite there yet, but at a minimum, you should have a pipeline in place. The reason for this is, is because if you have manual steps to deploy your product, it's both insecure, buggy, and most importantly, it uses developers' time where they could be used on looking at products. Once you have a pipeline in place, you should set up a regular cadence on when you're deploying your software. You should get your products out to market often and regularly, and you should go out and look for feedback. Deploying regularly does a few things. One, it gets those features out to market earlier so you can get that feedback. It also means that if there's bugs or issues, you can turn them around very quickly because you're deploying often and regularly. Some of the largest companies in the world actually deploy every hour or even more frequently. 
And that's because you don't want to get your production instance too out of scope with your dev instances, because you really want your developers working as close to production as possible. If you don't have this very quick release cycle and you don't have these pipelines in place, it becomes very hard to translate those requirements from clients through the prototyping phase into development and out to production. You need to keep things small and you need to keep it quick. You need to get in, develop those products and get them to the market. I've seen SaaS products that have quarterly or even six monthly release cycles. And to be honest, it's really the death of the business. Generally, they're in a larger enterprise space, but once you get to that stage, it's so costly and so expensive, it's like turning the Titanic. Businesses don't feel they're being responded to, issues go unresolved for too long, and customers start looking for other alternatives. If you can get those pipelines in place and get those small releases going, you're gonna get far better feedback from your clients, and what you'll actually find is some of the features they requested are not everything they need. You can get a smaller piece out, deploy it quickly, and that's actually probably gonna save 80% of their problems and will buy you more time overall. Deploying often and regularly is one of the really key strategies you should do in making your SaaS business successful. Final strategy for me, and I've actually already talked about it in the last few things, is building that feedback loop in. Working in software, you're at a real big advantage to a lot of other products. Let's take cars, for example. When a car gets released, there's generally only one model release per year, particularly around that car. So if there's a problem or an issue with that car or the feature set doesn't work, they have to release a year later. In the interim, Competitors can come to market, things can happen, and things can change. In software, there's a huge advantage here. If you set up those pipelines and you're prototyping correctly, you can get this feedback loop in place that allows you to deliver to clients, see how they use it, feedback in, iterating quickly and getting to market, you can build this feedback loop with your clients. Both, they feel like they're being listened to, but for your product, you're essentially being customer-led. And this is really what you want. Where the customers are gonna want that product, you can then charge for it. And the reason you can charge for it is because they see value in it. And the reason they see value in it is it's because they what they want. This becomes circular in the feedback loop and allows you to deliver a really good product to the market that's actually warranted by the clients. To put this another way, sometimes I've seen products that are essentially founder-led. And what that means is the founders come in and say, this is what I believe the market wants, and they put their thoughts in the process. The issue here is that while sometimes they're roughly correct, it's sometimes some of the smallest or minor changes that actually make it viable for customers. Founders also are sometimes out of the market. So while they may have been in that space previously, those spaces move forward and you really want people who are on the ground using the products to tell you exactly what you want to build. To be honest, if your market fits exactly what the clients want, you're going to struggle not to make a successful business. Purely then, it comes down to pricing and really looking at what value you're giving to the client and therefore what you're charging for it. Building that feedback loop in is critical. It allows you to get in there, build value, and get the client's problem solved, and that is really what's going to make a successful business. All right, so that's the four key strategies I've seen that help deliver software products well, and that's what makes your software business good. Let's boil that down. It's going to be prototyping, both for investors, clients, and developers. It's going to be deploying often and regularly. It's going to be getting that feedback loop in place, and it's going to be doing those minimal viable products. That is getting as minimal stuff out to market as you can to satisfy clients' needs. As I mentioned, I'd even suggest going for some sections of your product to do as a service, and then you can automate away those people at a later stage. At its heart, software is solving a problem. And if you can solve that problem with people first, once you've done that, you can then enshrine it in software. If you're looking to take your SaaS business to the next level and have issues with security, cloud, or even finding that perfect market fit, here at Flying Donkey, we've delivered some of the biggest SaaS products in the world. Feel free to get in touch and we'd be happy to help you out.